church-run education services hit hard due to funding. Plans underway for National Tourism Conference. You need the infrastructure. Arrival today of Katua and Ovenu from Rio. This is National MTV News with Mary Bartolo. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for Saturday's news. The education services of the United Church have been hit hard by insufficient funding from the national government. Its education secretary, Dr. Colin Loy, told MTV News this has forced the church-run agency to source funding outside to support the school's operations throughout the country. This year, the United Church Education Services only received 170,000 kina, which cannot cater for schools in their 11 regions. Dr. Loy told MTV News that the United Church Education Services have only received a quarter of its funds. It's now less than 2 million kina that they have received annually. We should receive uh, 2 million, 2 million. Yeah, yeah, but it, we are getting less than, the education sector receives less than that. Uh, this year I've, I've received, uh, for education sector, I've received 170,000, and that is insufficient. The United Church is working closely with the Church Partnership Program to help schools continue to operate under the development unit. And so far, we, some of our schools have uh, new infrastructure in, the, in, in them. Which, which makes us uh, feel that we are already connected to uh, CPP through our development unit. The national government's tuition fee pre-policy came under the microscope of the education conference in Midland Bay province. It was discussed funding were not delivered on time, which affected the school's operation. Some of our schools uh, in some of the 11 regions have been affected uh, due to uh, delay of uh, TFF to the schools and uh, some of them are at the verge of shutting down the schools but I encourage them to hang on. Uh, so as a church rep representative to the government, NAB, uh, I have to fight very hard for them to receive the money as soon as possible. And so now they, they some of them are okay, they have been, they've, they've received the money. Dr. Loy appealed to the national government to ensure that funding is appropriated accordingly. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. The Tourism Promotion Authority recently announced that it will host the National Tourism Conference and the Tourism Industry Expo from the September the 21st to the 27th. TPA maintains that the tourism industry cuts across all sectors of the economy and that these events would provide an avenue for everyone's collective input into the growth of tourism. Melissi Goviro reports. PNG TPA CEO Jerry Agus said this was a chance for government agencies, corporate entities, development partners, and tourism industry stakeholders to discuss a way forward for the industry. Industry as well, because in order for tourism to flourish, you need the infrastructure, you need the law and order issues, you need the better connectivity from from the airlines. You need uh, very good accommodation, you know, so there's a lot of uh, sectors and industries that play a major role in developing a vibrant uh, tourism industry. Agus added that the conference would provide an opportunity for international tourism experts to share the global tourism trends and experiences while addressing the issues and challenges faced by the PNG tourism industry. PNG local industry members will also be given the opportunity to showcase their tourism products and services during the National Tourism Expo Look in PNG. And also we are bringing our travel agents, all sailors, our destination marketing representatives coming from different countries and uh, they are coming to see what the products and services our industry members are are trying to sell. PNG TPA has announced that PNG Ports, a strong advocate of tourism, has committed 25,000 kina in sponsorship towards hosting both events. 
PNG Port's Chairman Nathaniel Poya highlighted that this donation was part of their continuous support to the government, not only to help the industry grow, but to support various policies and plans outlined in the Medium Term Development Plan and Vision 2050. We are supporting government's economic policy, the SM policy, agriculture policy, and various other policies. Melissa Viro, National MTV News. With Alotau preparing for international flights direct from Brisbane, Australia, it's important that airline staff also set standards at the main entry point. In New Guinea, Alotau port manager Robin Taman spoke of plans to improve services to meet tourist demands. It's just his stand week since appointed as Enugini Alatau port manager. When responding to questions from MTV, how Enugini Alatau will be prepared for the shift, Mr. Taman said, this will begin with airport staff. Enugini will work closely with airline operators and authorities to ensure the national government's tourism zone support initiative program is achievable. With uh, the image of in terms of uh, uh, our dressing and also uh, our end customers, uh, I think the first people that uh, the tourists uh, see is uh, we at the airport, uh, not in, uh, only in New Guinea, but the NAC staff and all the other uh, airline operators. Moral and ethical principles are vital as this will boost staff performance. With the disciplinary measures put in place, this will set standards in the workplace. And Mr. Taman is confident that any Guinea Alatau staff will deliver their best. How we uh, meet the requirements of the passengers and on the arrival and also when uh, they leave, what we do there is very important. The staff thanked Mr. Taman for his leadership in ensuring the environment is conducive to work in. So due to our on-time performance um, that we have to maintain, our timings and everything, we have to get it. So usually our port does it in less than 30 minutes. When we have a very full flight, then it's 30 minutes trip. And you can eat as an airline operator will work with the tourism industry to ensure that outcomes are delivered. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. The legal text for the controversial free trade agreement, PESA Plus, was signed last night in New Zealand. Seen as a landmark achievement following negotiations that have stretched for seven years, supporters of this agreement say it will bring prosperity to Pacific Island Forum countries. However, Papua New Guinea has strong issues against PESA Plus, saying it will not be beneficial to its key industries such as agriculture and tourism and have since left negotiations. Concerns have also been raised by civil society organizations that are adamant that this multilateral agreement will not be beneficial to small island countries. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more local stories after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. The protection of Papua New Guinea's biodiversity lacks adequate support. This from a Papua New Guinean research organization that has been training scientists in this field. Scientists from the PNG Institute of Biological Research say this field receives little attention, yet it is a factor that sets PNG apart from the rest of the world. The PNG Institute of Biological Research was born out of the need to continue training Papua New Guineans in the field of biological research. Because one of the things we think we lack in PNG is, is well-qualified, trained biologists. So far, the PNG IBR has assisted PNG scientists to receive doctorates through scholarships overseas and continue to support undergraduate and postgraduate students. However, they say there is very little support in this area. Papua New Guinea is rich in biodiversity, one of the third largest, uh, like, third uh, rich biodiversity areas. But government being, you know, boasting a lot about that at the international level. The government is doing very little to support its in-house uh, scientists and, and what we are doing. 
As a non-government organization, they continue to struggle with their work, which they say is filling an important gap in the country's data on biodiversity. Well, the third part of our program is awareness and communication. Communicating the science we do to other people, the scientists, policy makers, so, so this can at some point inform policy in terms of managing the wildlife. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. The governments of Papua New Guinea and the United States of America have signed a new bilateral assistance agreement which will provide 1.5 million US dollars from the US Agency for International Development to strengthen PNG's environmental resilience. This is the first of an estimated $7.5 million package over five years to support biodiversity conservation, natural resource management and climate change adaptation. PNG's rich and unique biodiversity resources are in fact among the world's most threatened. U.S. Ambassador to PNG Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, Catherine Herbert Gray, however commended the government for its commitment to preserving the environment in becoming the 23rd nation in the world to ratify the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Newly appointed Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Goroka, Darius Kawuza, says he will continue the good work left by his predecessor, Bishop Francesco Sarego. Bishop Darius said his focus is to strengthen the family, life foundation, which is the source of everything. Bishop Darius Kawuza, 49 years of age, from the Holy Family Order has been consecrated into his Episcopal ministry as Bishop of the Gorka Catholic Diocese. Last Saturday, hundreds gathered at Kefamo Catholic Mission and witnessed the ordination led by main celebrant Bishop Francisco Serego and assisted by Medang Archbishop Stephen Reichardt and Mount Hagen Archbishop Douglas Young. Over 500 Catholic faithful from Mandy where Bishop Darius served for 20 years, also came to celebrate. The occasion became more meaningful with the presence of Bishop Darius' family all the way from Poland, his own mother and brother. The journey as shepherd of the flock has begun. To continue the same way, and I ask people, and I ask everybody to clap their hands for the priest so that we will work together. And for his own mother to attend, his second ordination from priesthood and now bishop is a lifetime memory. My mother brought a picture of Our Lady from Częstochowa. Black, we call them, we call her Black Madonna. That's the most famous and uh, national shrine for us in Poland. And when she gave me the picture, it was like she was giving me to her protection, to Our Lady protection again. Retired Bishop Francisco Sarago spoke on the importance of laity and evangelization in the church today. We have to encourage more and more the priest to be really in tune with the people, to the needs of the people. Fabian Hackett, National MTV News. Turning overseas now and a small community in Canada has rallied to help a man who fled the bitterness of Syria's civil war. Residents helped Hassan Hadhad build a chocolate business to replace the one he lost. The refugee named his company Peace by Chocolate to honor his new sweet life. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sport. President of PNG Boxing Federation, John Avira, was also at the airport today to welcome home Katua. Avira congratulated the 18-year-old on his performance, saying his fight at the Rio Olympics was well above expectations. I'm happy with uh, Thaddeus, our boxer, is, uh, attended the Olympic Games in Rio. To us, his performance was well above our expectations. We sent him to Rio quite quite raw. We were, we were very much aware of that, but we thought it would be very good for him to start uh, putting the foundation for the bigger, you know, for the next Olympic Games in 2020. It's obviously it's only 18 going 19 now. Uh, Commonwealth Games in 2018 is uh, underway. Pacific Games underway uh, in Tonga. 
and then the 2020 Olympic Games. So, so those are the high-level uh, I, I, I competition that we're looking at. The Port Moresby Soccer Association competition is now into round three of this year's season. After almost two years of absence, the Major League heads to Bomana Correctional Institute with 29 teams in both the men's and women's divisions. Port Mosby Premier League competition is just two rounds away before the finals, with today's games to wrap up round three. <laughs> Tournament coordinator Robert Zabari says the competition has four pools, for the men's division and one for the women. A lot of uh, young players who have, who have played in NSL, they're playing. Uh, and uh, they can, of uh, course, it's up to the NSL clubs to uh, select the players who are fit. At one stage, the PMSA was seen as the country's premier football association, but lost momentum since August 2014 due to challenges such as availability of playing grounds. Due to uh, the fields have been, uh, just, uh, have been upgraded, uh, we, have, uh, not, uh, we have not played uh, since, uh, since 2014. And this is our, our first uh, competition this, uh, this year. Now the competition is slowly picking up pace with this year's total participation of 29 teams for this season alone, indicating that PMSA could return to its glory days. Three years absence of playing uh, and then it's coming and starting in a short competition. But hopefully we are trying to you know, bring the fitness level of the players to, to the standard that we want to see and hoping. But uh, next year will be more better and stronger competition. The Cup Challenge started at 9 a.m. and ended at 3 p.m. at the Bomana CIS College. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. And then in Strukai Sports, we'll have for you the weather details for the next 24 hours when we come back. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Here's a look at the weather for the next 24 hours. First of all, in the southern region, Port Mosby, evening showers with a top of 30 degrees. To the Mamasa region, lay fine but cloudy, mostly fine in Wau, fine in Madang and Wewak, thundery showers in Vanimore. To the New Guinea Islands region, fine in Lorangau and Kaviang, a few showers elsewhere in the region. And in the Highland region, Mount Hagen, Goruka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these centers can expect showers with morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's the way it is this Saturday, the 27th of August 2016. From the MTV News team, I'm Meribotulo. Pleasant viewing. Good night. <laughs>